In this section of chapter 2, I'm going to discuss types of carbon in different organic compounds, naming and conformations. Here we are showing you a functional group for alkane family. Like this represents a member of an alkane family. There is no double bond or triple bond in alkane family. So it's often called saturated hydrocarbon. So this is the first member of alkane family is called methane. The two carbon compound is called ethane. Similarly, if you just write down carbon atoms one after another, it would be propane, butane, pentane, hexane. So if I just write down the carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, that would give you butane if you fill in with hydrogen. And how do I know how many hydrogens? Again, keep in mind carbon must have four bonds. If I want to fill in the N carbon with hydrogen, so this is how you fill in with hydrogen. Make sure you never, never have number more than four. I'm talking about my number of bonds around any carbon. So similarly on this end also you'd have total three hydrogens that gives it four bonds. Okay, then you'd have two hydrogens. Here also you have two hydrogens and that's how you got butane. So I'd like you to remember these names, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane. And when you have a double bond between any two carbon, then it's no longer alkane. The family name would be alkene. In this slide, we're going to show you how you get different alkyl groups from alkane. Basically, you remove one hydrogen from an alkane and that would give you alkyl. For example, this is methane. If I get rid of one hydrogen, I get methyl. So this is methyl. So you can write down this methyl. And this is where hydrogen was removed. And often these alkyl groups are attached to a long chain compound. So in that case, it would be considered to be a branch or a substituent group. Similarly, if I get rid of one hydrogen from ethane, so if say I get rid of this hydrogen from ethane, it becomes ethyl. So this is ethyl group. Again, this methyl group, ethyl group, propyl group, this can be attached to a long chain compound or a different compound. And this would be a substituent group attached to a long chain. Here I'm going to show you how we can get different alkyl group from alkane. For methane or ethane, you're going to get only one alkyl group because they're all identical, no matter which hydrogen you get rid of. For example, this is ethane. If I get rid of hydrogen from this side or from this side, it doesn't matter. I get only one type of, only one compound, which is called ethyl. So CH3, if you have a model that would be even more useful to understand, CH3, CH2, and this is the N from where you got rid of hydrogen. So this is ethyl. But this is not the case when I get rid of hydrogen from propyl. So this is ethane. Make sure you know these names. If I have a propane, methane, ethane, propane. So let's fill in with hydrogen. I must have three hydrogens on this end because carbon must have four bonds. And I must have two hydrogens on this next carbon and three hydrogens on the last one. So this is propane. We often hear about propane gas. Now it's the same propane. Now I can get rid of hydrogen from different location. They are not all identical. If I get rid of this hydrogen from this end, say if I get rid of this hydrogen, then it would look like this. 
and I'm just going to sh draw one bond there where I got rid of hydrogen. This would be called propyl. In old books, they used to call n-propyl or normal propyl, but these days they don't use the prefix n. Well, if I get rid of this hydrogen, it will still be same, same propyl group. On the other hand, if I get rid of this hydrogen from the middle carbon, it's not going to be the same as what I have already drawn. Let's draw that. So this time, I'm just going to show you the bond between carbon and we'd also show you the location from where hydrogen is gone. So now this time this one doesn't have hydrogen. So the question is this is off a propyl, this is off a propyl but it's not the same propyl. You can see here this is where it is bonded to a long chain molecule and in this case it's at that at the terminal carbon it's bonded to long chain molecule. So if this is the long chain molecule, this is the long chain molecule. So how do you name this? This would be called isopropyl. So this is called isopropyl. Isopropyl is, nest, is basically is a propyl group where there's a branching next to the last. So this is my point of attachment to the long chain. Let's go to this carbon, let's go to the end carbon and next to the last, there is a branching. Whenever there's a branching next to the last, we call it iso. So there could be two kinds of propyl. One is normal propyl or just propyl, and the other one is isopropyl. Similarly, for butane, I can have more than one, and which we're going to show you next. Now from butane, I can get a number of butyl. Now keep that in mind that there are two types of butane I can draw. Let's first draw the skeleton structure. One, two, three, four. Even though these angles are 109.5 and bent, I'm just showing you for simplicity, showing you like in a straight line. Now if you fill in with hydrogen, you can get like this. Don't forget that carbon should not have more than four bonds. So we're trying to satisfy that four bonds of carbon. And I can get rid of this hydrogen and get one, two, three, four. And the point of attachment is here. This is called butyl group. So this is butane and this is butyl and these are hydrogen obviously you just count the number of hydrogen that give you <coughs> the ex actual formula so I'm just I just left out hydrogens now if I now get rid of this hydrogen the second um, hydrogen that bonded to the second carbon from the right, rightmost one, then I get something like this. One, two, three, four. So this time, this is the location where hydrogen is gone, and this is the point of attachment to a long chain. Let's see what kind of butyl group is this. This is my longest chain starting from here. This is my last carbon next to the last. There is no branching, so it cannot be iso. Rather, this is called sec butyl. So this carbon at the point of attachment, this is the point of attachment, is bonded to two other carbon. So that's why it's called sec or secondary butyl group. I may not have a simple butane like this. I can have a branching. So first drawing the 
skeleton structure. This is isobutyl because you have branching next to the last. If you think about this with the longest chain, this is the end of the chain. Next to the last is this and there is a branching. And you can see it better. So it's like this is the stem of a tree and this is the branch. So whenever you have a branching next to the last carbon, then it's called iso. In this case, it'd be isobutane. Now you fill in with all hydrogens, CH3 here, CH3 here, CH3 here, and obviously you can only have CH here to make four bonds. So that's isobutane. Now, if I get rid of hydrogen from this end, I'll be getting C, 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 and then this is the end from where hydrogen is gone, and that could be attached to a long chain molecule. What kind of group is this? This is neither N-butyl or Sec-butyl. Why? This is my longest chain, and next to the last, there is a branching. This is the branching. This will be called isobutyl. Now there's one other possibility of butyl. If I get rid of hydrogen from the bottom, from this one, then I get something like this. So from here I can get C, C, C. You can back clearly see it without the hydrogen. So this is the point of attachment. And this is called T-butyl or tertiary butyl. So I write down the way it's written in the book. Tart butyl. Okay, so these are the different alkyl groups. In this slide, we're showing you different types of carbon in an alkane. Like the carbon with asterisk is bonded to only one other carbon. Even though this could be a little bit confusing the way it's drawn, it may appear to you that these three hydrogens are bonded to that carbon. No. In order to have four bonds around carbon, you must have this end. You can redraw this end so that you have a clear understanding. So it be CH3N. And then there's a bonding between this carbon and this carbon. So in other words, this carbon is bonded to only one other carbon, which is this, and that's called primary or one degree carbon. Now come to the next compound. This carbon is bonded to two other carbons, one on the right side, the other one is on the left side, and this is called two degree. So if it's bonded to one other carbon, it's one degree, two other carbons, it's called two degree or secondary. In this case, this carbon is bonded to three other carbon. This is one, this is two, this is three, and that's called three degree or tertiary. In next compound, carbon is bonded to four other carbons. One, two, three, four. And that's why it's four degree or quaternary. In this slide, we're showing you how to name alkanes. Before you name a compound, try to find the longest continuous carbon chain. Like in two examples that I have given below, this is the longest chain that I could think of. No matter from which side you start, you, you'd get one, two, three, four, five, six, which are highlighted having six carbon atoms. Now, once you identify the longest chain, Whatever is attached to the longest chain other than hydrogen would make branch points. So this is the methyl group and this is an ethyl group. There are two branches. So in this particular compound, uh, the way we have identified the longest chain, it has two branch points. Now the same, comp same compound I'm trying a different way. Still I get one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon. 
in a zigzag manner, but these are still continuous. Continuous means they're bonded back to back, back to back. And if this is my longest chain, so this is my longest chain now, and I have now only one branch point. This is my branch. So on the left hand side, the way I identified the longest chain, I have two branch points and the way I identify the longest chain has one branch point. So the question is, which one are we going to accept in naming this compound? So that's why this rule has been developed, which says that if two chains of equal length are present, choose the one with the larger number of branch points or substituents. I often tell students to think about uh, trees having more branches trees look always nicer and the left hand side it doesn't look nice maybe on, on a stormy day it lost some of its branches so it looks really bad having only one branch point so more branches is nicer is more acceptable and in the same way in organic chemistry if longest chain has more branches that would be the better way of naming the compound with those branches So keep this in mind, in naming organic compounds, the longest chain of carbon atoms with more branch points is accepted when two chains of equal length are present. So here we are giving you specific examples. Also we need to know that in numbering the longest chain, that's what you need to number before you name it, begin at the end and near is the first branch point. So if I start numbering from this end when I have one so it'd be one two then this is three and look at the fourth carbon this is the fourth carbon of the longest chain longest chain is highlighted with black this is the branch so the branching you can see Actually, there are two branches you can see. One in the third location, that's one branch, which I missed it. The location of the first branch point and fourth carbon also has the other branch. On the other hand, if I start numbering from right hand side, this is what we're numbering. From the right hand side one two three four the fourth carbon has the branch point so that the location of the first branch point is the fourth and then fifth carbon would have the second branch point so obviously this one is accepted because that gives the the number is closest to the first branch point three is better than four because which is closer to the first branch point. So that's how you determine that, determine from which end you, are, you start numbering the longest chain. Once you are done with numbering, then you'll have to name these substituent groups. This is CH3, if you want to fill in with hydrogen because there is already a bond. So that's a methyl group. And the three methyl, that'll be the name of that substituent group. In the fourth position, you have this which is ethyl group, so 4-ethyl. So now we know that from longest chain, these are the two branches that come out. One is the methyl, which is, and the third location you have methyl, and fourth location you have ethyl. And the longest chain has seven carbon. So you have to remember that one carbon is methane, ethane, then propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, heptamine seven. So we already did this, assign a number to each substituent group according to its point of attachment. We already did that. And use hyphens or dash between a number and a letter. So keep that in mind. Like 4-ethyl, between 4 and E, there is a dash. 3-methyl, again, between number and a letter, you get a dash. Why the bottom is not right? Because you're not maintaining alphabetic ordering. E comes before M. So you say 4-ethyl, then 3-methyl. 
So keep all these rules in mind so that you can come up with the right answer when I ask you a question on naming of alkane. Now some simple properties, all alkanes, this is methane, this is ethane, with oxygen, they're burning oxygen, giving carbon dioxide and H2O. In presence of sunlight, it would break down. And in presence of chlorine and sunlight, you can get different chlorides. And also one property that we often discuss is boiling point and melting point of alkanes. They all increase as you're looking at bigger and bigger alkanes like methane to propane, propane to pentane, hexane, heptane. So as you go along this direction, boiling point is increased, melting point is also increased. So that means you have to increase heat. Increase, they need increasing amount of heat to be melted or to be boiled. Next, we're going to talk about rotation, about carbon-carbon bond, and they're called conformation. So there are two ways of representing conformations. One is called Sawhorse representation. The other one is called Newman projection. Again, I encourage you to have molecular model because that would make your understanding. In this slide, we're showing you two representations of alkane, in this particular case is ethane. Now you have a single bond here, so you can rotate these hydrogens around this carbon-carbon single bond. You can better see this picture here. So use your model to build something like this. Each time you rotate to a certain angle and stop, you get one conformation. So there are many, many conformations possible. But some of these conform conformations are more stable than the other ones. Let's find out this from the bottom picture, which is Newman projection. According to Newman projection, you're looking at one of these carbons, the other carbon is away from you, right at the location opposite of this carbon. So it would look like this. The front carbon is shown here with a dot. The carbon at the back is shown with a circle. And if locations of hydrogens are like this, in front carbon, they're like this. So these are the three hydrogens of the front carbon. The back carbon, the hydrogens are not facing each other. They're in between. And these are called a staggered conform conformation. They're more stable than what is called eclipsed, where front hydrogens are right in front. I mean, front hydrogens and back hydrogens are just facing each other. So this is the eclipse. So if you have a, this is hydrogen, this is the other hydrogen. This is one hydrogen, this is the other hydrogen. So they're very unstable conformation. And staggered, this is the staggered one with hydrogens. You can see that hydrogens are in between the front hydrogens are in between the back hydrogens and it's called staggered. So staggered is most stable of all conformations and this is the least stable or most unstable conformation because they repel each other when they're facing each other. They don't want to face each other. 